Hello everyone. This presentation will provide an overview of phase one and two clinical trials of drug development with an emphasis on the regulatory components. Provided is an agenda for this presentation with timestamps for your convenience. Shown here is a general timeline of drug development with phase one and two clinical trials outlined. Clinical trials of drugs are designed to acquire information about both the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic properties of a candidate drug in humans, where pharmacokinetics is the study of what the body does to the drug and pharmacodynamics is the study of what the drug does to the body. The United States National Institutes of Health identify seven ethical principles that must be satisfied before a clinical trial can begin. These include the social and clinical value of the trial must be demonstrated, scientific validity, a fair selection of subjects for the trial, informed consent, a favorable risk to benefit ratio, the presence of an independent review, as well as respect for potential and enrolled subjects. Clinical trials in humans are carefully scrutinized and regulated by the FDA to protect the health and safety of human test subjects and ensure the integrity and usefulness of the clinical study data. Numerous meetings between both the FDA and the drug sponsor occur during this time. As a result, the clinical investigation phase may take as many as 12 years to complete. In fact, only one in five drug compounds tested may actually demonstrate clinical effectiveness and safety and consequently reach the U.S. marketplace. Research projects that use humans as study subjects, such as phase one and two clinical trials, must be approved before investigators can begin enrolling subjects into the trial. A clinical study protocol must be developed, proposed by the sponsor, and then reviewed by what is called an Institutional Review Board, or IRB. The IRB is the committee charged with ensuring that the study subjects are protected and not exposed to unnecessary harm or unethical medical procedures. This committee consists of both healthcare and non-healthcare professionals. People specialized in ethics must also be included. The IRB holds numerous responsibilities when evaluating a research proposal, including those listed on this slide for your reference. It is essential that data generated during the course of a clinical trial be monitored closely, especially the data related to adverse effects of the drug. Routine monitoring is a requirement as each clinical protocol must have a data safety monitoring plan, which stipulates the responsibility for routine review frequency of review, reporting responsibilities, and authority for modifying or stopping the study. In many large clinical trials, these responsibilities are assumed by a formal data safety monitoring board. This board reviews aggregate data that have either been unblinded or are separated by study arm to allow ongoing oversight of emerging trends in the data. Drug sponsors must submit an investigational new drug or IND application to the FDA before beginning clinical research. Unlike the preclinical investigation stage, the IND phase has much more direct FDA activity throughout. In the IND application, developers must include any animal study data and toxicity data, manufacturing information, clinical protocols for studies to be conducted, data from any prior human research, as well as information about the investigator. The FDA review team has 30 days to review the original IND submission and respond. Now we will discuss the tenets of phase one clinical trials. During phase one studies, researchers test a new drug in a relatively small number of participants around 20 to 100 healthy volunteers. These trials may exclude children, women of childbearing age, and other more vulnerable patient groups. An important exception is that phase one studies for cancer chemotherapeutics enroll only patients with cancer. 
The main objectives of phase one trials are to determine the safety and toxicity of the drug in humans. The following are also determined. Tolerated doses, any acute side effects, as well as optimal dosage forms. All of this information is important to the design of phase two studies. As a phase one trial continues, researchers answer questions related to how the drug works in the body, the side effects associated with increased dosage, and early information about how effective it is to determine how to best administer the drug to limit any risks and maximize possible benefits. A series of ascending dose levels is used, with initial doses determined by extrapolation from animal data, beginning with a low dose and proceeding until a dose range suitable for use in later trials is identified. A small group of subjects is treated concurrently and may receive one dose of medication or several doses in a series of consecutive treatment periods. Data from each set of studies are generally collected and assessed before choosing the next set of doses for administration. Lastly, adverse effects, or AEs, are investigated intensely in phase one trials. In some cases, such as the investigation of oncology drugs, dose escalation is continued until limited by toxicity for the determination of a maximally tolerated dose. It is important to note that phase one trials are generally conducted in a hospital setting with close medical monitoring to make this possible. Next, we will discuss phase two clinical trials. Phase two trials are slightly larger with around 100 to 300 participants. An important distinction from phase one trials is that the subjects generally have the disease or diseases for which the drug is intended, or they are capable of demonstrating an appropriate validated biologic surrogate marker to indicate a meaningful response to the drug. The primary objective is to determine the efficacy of the drug in humans, usually at varying levels of exposure. Additionally, the exposure response relationships of the drug are analyzed and used to determine dose selection of the candidate drug in phase three trials. Phase two clinical trials can be further stratified as phase two A and phase two B. Phase 2A can be called a pilot study that is used to determine initial efficacy. The participants generally have a mild or early form of the disease to limit potential confounding factors that exist in more severe or advanced stages of the disease process. On the other hand, in Phase 2B, the participants generally have a more advanced disease condition. The primary objectives are to determine the drug's possible effectiveness against the targeted condition and its safety in humans. These trials further define a target patient exposure for phase three studies. Phase two studies are designed to extend the safety database and provide initial evidence for the efficacy of a compound. Thus, the trials range from small, single-arm studies to randomized trials comparing a control treatment with the experimental drug. Investigators can either compare at a single dose or at several doses. Because these studies vary considerably in size and objectives, the designs are quite heterogeneous. Phase two trials are not designed to give definitive evidence of efficacy and the goal of the trial is to lead to a decision concerning further phase three testing rather than a regulatory submission. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Listed are all the references used.